Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Sprague and uh, four days ago I started on a program called Remote Year where I will be living and working remotely from a different country every month for 12 months. Uh, and the idea is that it gives you an opportunity to travel, experience new cultures, but provides you a setup to be able to effectively work remotely, um, kind of in whatever type of field you are doing. Uh, and that part is up to you. And uh, this is nearing the end of my first week. And so what I plan on doing is uh, just sharing a video at the end of every week. Um, so by the end of the year, I will have 52 videos to be able to look back on. Um, and hopefully they help anyone else trying to make the decision about remote year or just like remote life in general. Um, and I just want to share kind of my key learnings or things that I'm figuring out throughout the week and then also do a recap of just my best experiences, more of like quick photo video snapshots. But we'll see how it goes because I, as you see, I kind of have like a low key video setup and I am not yet the master video editor that I will be in a year. So uh, I don't want that to stop me from trying though. So here I am for nearing the end of my first week in Lima, Peru. Um, that's my first month city and I want to share with you my four main just like thoughts going on in my head after this first week of remote year and then the end will be a montage of my uh, highest like highest most fun top experiences of the week. So um, takeaway what number one is I've been really uh, surprised by the amount of organization that remote year has provided in this first week just in general. I had someone pick me up at the airport on Sunday when I got in, take me directly to my apartment. There was someone then waiting at the apartment to give me a key right away. Uh, we had various information sessions on the first um, full day Monday where we learned about the history of Peru. Um, one of the most helpful things is that we have a, two local guides in every city um, and they've just been dropping uh, cool ideas like to do in the city um, in Slack, uh, which is kind of just like what you would do in your own city when you're more tapped into like, oh, there's this cool art gallery opening or things like that. Um, it's way harder to do that when you're in a brand new international city and don't speak the language. So that level of organization and just like kind of like the intangibles that you get through the program um, so far to me have been totally worth the kind of additional cost that remote year is over doing it by yourself. So that's number one. Two, um, I've been pleasantly surprised so far how it also really feels like you're actually living in the city on your own rather than kind of like going to college or going to summer camp. Um, I'm here with a group of 35 people, so I was a little nervous in the beginning if it felt like, you know, are we all going to be living in the same building and we're doing everything together and I can't kind of have my own life because um, I really do want to connect with everyone on the program, but. I also don't want to feel like I'm in a like hiatus like world from real life for a year. I want it, this to integrate travel into my real life. So um, one thing that I think has a big uh, part in that is that we're not all in the same apartment building. We're all just spread out in apartment buildings across the city. Um, they're all in the same neighborhood, so it's really easy to get to each other. But me and I am living with one other woman, one roommate for this month. Um, we're just in a normal apartment that I would normally live in in any other city. Um, just happens to be in Lima, Peru. And so I like that, like waking up in the morning in the apartment, getting ready, walking to the co-working space. It just starts to feel like you're really living in the city and you are getting into a regular routine. Uh, three. Um, so uh, while I'm doing this year, I am trying out a new working situation. Um, I quit my full-time job in November of 2019, actually totally unrelated to remote year. If you want to learn more about why I quit and how I then use my time off to decide to come on a remote year, you can watch my first YouTube series, which um, I went through a book called Designing Your Life. Um, and it was a really cool process for me. But anyway, so this is my first week of really testing out that situation. I'm basically working like 20 to 40 hours on one primary job. Um, and that in itself is already more flexible hours. Um, I kind of, as long as I can talk to the team, I can decide when I wanna work. Um, and then I'm also pulling in various projects that I've been wanting to work on for the last few years but never have prioritized, like videos and a few other things. So um, I don't have a huge takeaway yet other than like honestly it feels so <laughs> freeing and like 
powerful to be in control of your own time. I wake up every day and I decide based on my energy levels how I can structure my day. So um, I'm so curious to see how I'll feel in six months and like what the cons of this are. But so far, my biggest takeaway is just I'm really happy I'm trying something new because no matter what, I'll learn. Um, and so far, it just makes me realize how much I've had my time defined by other people for the last nine years. Uh, and my last takeaway um, is just around kind of like the group dynamics. Um, so like I said, I'm traveling with 35 people for the entire year. We go to every country together. And um, I am like right in the middle of the spectrum of an introvert and an extrovert. I love meeting people. I like doing activities, um, but I also really do need my alone time to re-energize and to kind of just stay centered and not fall into the trap of like not having my own identity. Um, so, uh, so far I will say that it's been a little overwhelming. Um, like when you're all of a sudden at a dinner with 20 people and like you are at this big long table and it's really hard to have like authentic conversations with that many people and also like a little just like overwhelming like especially when it's new and new people um and i don't always think that people are their most authentic selves in that situation so if i'm being honest that's been a little like not my favorite but also i really do like all the people i've met through it and i've had some really good conversations in those groups um so uh i guess that one is more just like an asterisk the last thought asterisk is i'm really curious to see how the group dynamics continue to evolve, who I'm going to build closer relationships with, and um, how everyone starts to find a balance between being part of the group but also kind of living their own life. And I also think it's going to be a really good growth opportunity for me um, to get a little, like see if I can not be as drained in big group situations um, and learn how to still create those genuine connections when there are a lot of people around um, and not uh, like go into myself so much. So those are my four things just floating around my head after this first week. And now I'm going to share just some of my top experiences. Um, and I will see you next week after I am halfway through the first month in Peru.